Welcome to your latest episode of Wrestling with World Wide. Willis, what's up, folks? This one's a little late. That's on me. That's on me. Um, had some plans come up and, you know what I mean? You know how life works. Threw off the scheduling a little bit, but I had to give you something for this week. And uh, we got plenty to talk about. So, uh, matches of the week. There were actually some really good matches on uh, on the regular uh, shows. So, on Friday, we had Carmelo Hayes versus Andrade. That was a really good match. Those two have great chemistry. Um, really good style clash. Kind of a bigger cruiserweight versus a small cruiserweight. And, uh, yeah, they just they just did really well together, man. They had the crowd engaged the whole time. Uh, Andrade's looked great since coming to the main roster. I think he's a guy on the rise. And just his wrestling work is, is fun. It's different. I love um, Santos Escobar, but I feel like Andrade is more entertaining to watch in the match, in the ring. You know, you know like he has a lot going for him. So I just think Andrade – showed in this match all his skills, all the different things he can do, uh, how he can work with a bigger guy and a smaller guy. He can kind of show a powerful side with some powerful moves. I thought Andrade and Carmelo are really good in this one. Next we have the on Monday Night Raw, this latest episode, we have Braun Breaker versus Ilya Dragunov. Man, when I saw this one going to be a match, I knew it was going to be a banger. Like, I knew. Them two just... Even going back to NXT, if you if you enjoyed that match, go ahead and go watch the matches at NXT. Really good. Uh, they're hard hitting, constri- completely different styles, but all but they kind of go about their styles the same way as far as like you know balls to the wall, you know putting their bodies on the line, um, and just doing some crazy stuff. I, I thought they had some crazy, really good spots in that match with the suplex kind of throw on the little side. Uh, pole on the side where Dragunov hit that. That was tough. And when Dragunov did the like fireman's carry um, kind of uh, kind of slam on the on the side of the ring, that was tough. That looked really good. And then obviously the spear that kind of ended the match, where they said Ilya's head bounced off the ring, which I don't think it did. But based on the replay, I saw I didn't think it did. But yeah, I thought. And they called the match Braun won, but that was, I feel it like a showcase of the future, of the future of the main of the main card and the mid card, because they'll kind of jump in and out of it. Um, I think they're both main card material, but they'll both jump in and out of it based on who's getting the, you know, title run first. But I thought both of those guys did a great job making each other look really good. Uh, again, uh, pushing each other and making it a physical match, which the crowd, again, in Green Bay was really engaged just because those guys were laying it all on the line. And they, they were it was easy to tell that they were doing that. Um, all right, let's talk about uh, some of the goings on right now. Obviously, like we talked about, Rhea Ripley and Dom, their relationship. Um, seems like in this episode, in the latest episode of Raw, they kind of took it back to the norm as far as um, Dom really publicly – almost embarrassingly um, shut down Liv in front of Rhea, and Rhea was, like, happy about it. And so um, that's kind of how we're going moving forward. It was cool to see, like, the backstage, the Judgment Day backstage drama segments are some of the best parts of the Monday Night Raw experience right now. Just having Rhea back, having her Boston dudes around, the dudes are kind of pushing back a little bit. Um, and the guys are kind of just starting beasts with what, whoever uh, they want to. And Rhea's like, whoa, think about this. Like, don't just accept matches. Don't just, you know what I mean, do that. Actually think about it first. And, um, you know, she wasn't listened to, but I thought Rhea had some really good advice. And kind of let us let us know, like, why she is so protective over Dom and things of that nature. So I thought – I thought – uh Rhea's been a huge get, but I also thought the Judgment Day's work without Rhea was really good and stuff outside of the ring. So I thought they had some of the best segments of the of the night, um, of the really the last couple months, really. Um, then we have, um, I, I, I'm excited to see 
the, how the Dom thing plays out and how that affects, you know what I mean, things. But I do want to talk about Damian Priest, man. I, I thought Gunther did an amazing job selling that that promo last week as sort of like an elitist, um, you know, elitist athlete who thinks they're better than everyone because they have money and all these resources and things. And it made you feel for for Damian, who has a very, like, not super trouble past, but has a very complicated past. And so it definitely resonated. And uh, I thought I thought Damian did a great job. Uh, I thought Damian and Gunther did a great job in that promo by putting each other over while also Gunther building some heat for himself. Because when he came out this past Monday, people were booing him. And then when Damian came out, they were so happy. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm really liking what I'm seeing as far as the Judgment Day because I like the fact that they have people who are heels right now, people who are kind of in between, and then you have, you know, Rhea's kind of an in-betweener. Uh, Dom and Finn and, and Carlito right now are heels, but then you have Damian who's kind of playing both sides and is kind of a good guy, low-key. And, um, yeah, I just think that – it's tough because um, Judgment Day has a lot of weight to carry. It's raw, so like it's the flagship show. So you're automatically getting compared to Bloodline and many others, and they don't just don't have the talent of those guys. However, they've done a great job since being created you know, a couple years ago and staying together, being staying relevant, staying on TV, and um, I'm really liking their dynamic, especially backstage, like during the the um, you know, interviews or, or tapping into the locker room. It's really good. It's always like a laugh or something pretty good coming out of that Judgment Day segment. So uh, I'm really happy that, that Damien's kind of getting his own – he's part of the group, but he's kind of getting his own lane since he's the champ to be a good champion. You know what I mean? And um, I'm looking forward to that. And I – I think he's shown the ability to, to to get a crowd behind him, which is very hard to do as a babyface champ. And Gunther helped him do that. You know what I mean? Anything Gunther touches becomes better. And um, he'll face Gunther and, and Priest will face each other at SummerSlam. I'm pretty sure. I'm I'm wondering if Gunther wins or if we get an interference. Uh, obviously from Judgment Day to kind of throw things off, but we shall see. Well, we see that CM Punk is cleared now by his doctors after he tore his, I believe his high shoulder uh, at Royal Rumble last year, earlier this year. Um, so that should be a phone. Our special guest referee is Seth freaking Rollins, who is kind of in the middle of this whole rivalry. And so it's kind of appropriate to have him there as the referee. And, yeah, I, I just – I'm excited to see this match. This is potentially the rivalry of the year uh, with Drew and CM, like CM Punk. Like, they have gone to blows. Like, they've been doing some personal stuff, doing a lot of great stuff, and I think they've brought the intensity that a lot of these other rivalries just haven't brought. And so, um, definitely looking forward to Drew versus CM Punk SmackDown. I mean, I'm sorry, SummerSlam. And that might be the, the most hyped up match of the night. Crazy to say, but like a lot of people are looking for them. They haven't put their hands on each other very much in this rivalry. And when they have, it's given one the advantage and one the other. But I think so far, this might be the rivalry of the year for me if I was grading right now. Um, again, CM Punk is cleared, which got the crowd going, uh, which is good to hear. You know what I mean? With him coming back and then getting hurt, it was kind of a red flag, sort of. But now that he's back, um, we'll see how it goes. You know what I mean? Um, then we have Braun Breaker versus Sammy. Braun Breaker defeated Ilya, which was the number one contender match for the Intercontinental Championship. And, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one just because, like, in their last match, they didn't really let – um let him get off. Like they didn't really let Braun do his thing. You know what I mean? Um, they kind of had Sammy kind of just always coming back, but 
Bron didn't really get to flex, where in this case, I think he's going to be able to flex and potentially take that title off of Sammy because I think it's time. I really do. I think it's time for Sammy to lose it and start doing something else. Um, yeah, but – and then next we have L.A. Knight versus Logan Paul. This is – I feel like these guys are faced off before for some reason. But this is the consummate, like, Hollywood, you know, SummerSlam type of match. It's going to get a lot of eyeballs and a lot of eyeballs on it. And uh, deservingly so because I think Logan Paul is going to do a great job. Again, I've talked about this before, L.A. Knight being the the vet in the ring. I'm interested how that's going to work as far as, like, pulling off the match at a really good rate, at a really good pace. And um, I think they have the capabilities to do it. And I think that L.A. Knight Logan could steal the, steal the show. Low key, just because it's not really being talked about as much when you talk about SummerSlam, it's not it's not a ton. Um, then we have a Bloodline update. I am interested in the way the Bloodline is going about this, kind of doing it in a Shield fashion, where they're just beating people up, putting them through tables, making them watch other do other teammates get beat up really badly. So, yeah, I just think um, the Bloodline is doing some great work right now. Uh, Solo Sokoa is doing a good job. He's made it really, he's kind of leaned into us, his certain character, which is tough to do, right? Especially when you're following one of the goats. It's kind of hard to do, but I thought he's done a good job on the microphone and kind of uh, laying out his plan. Um, and he's also using his resources, right, to go collect new S- Samoans um, who are part of the family ready to go. Uh, Jacob Fatu, man, that was an amazing pickup. That dude's scary looking. He's mean. He's all the things you could think of. And, yeah, man, Jacob Fatu is nasty. What he did to Kevin Owens, that was tough. Running in the ropes, kind of like a normal Samoan wrestler does, running and kind of throwing their hip into the guy's head. He did it a bunch of times, the most I've seen in a while. So, yeah, I think Jacob Fatu is star in the making. Uh, for sure, for sure, and I'm and I'm glad he got a really good intro. I'm hoping that he shows up in this match in a potential match between Cody, Kevin, and KO versus the Bloodline. That'd be interesting. I, I'd I'd like to see that uh, main event if possible. Um, yeah, the Bloodline is doing great work. Again, it's not necessarily Sami Zayn era Bloodline, but it does its job. Um, and then last thing I want to talk about, we're going to do a a little bit of start bench cut, a little bit of start bench cut. We've done this before. If you, if you listened to me before, you know what I'm talking about. Start bench cut is basically in basketball terms, almost to where you're given three options. You pick one to start, one to bench and one to cut. Right. And so example, my first one is. Drew McIntyre, CM Punk, or Seth freaking Rollins. Now, this is extremely hard because I like all of them. Um, However, uh, I'm going to have to go with Drew as my starter just because his character work has been impeccable. He's doing some of the best work in his life right now, and he's just so hot. So number two for me is Seth. I'm going to bench Seth uh, just because he's so versatile and he just has so much experience. Um, and then I'm going to cut CM Punk just because the experience factor, the health factor, but and his overall accomplishments are pretty crazy. But I'm going to bench CM Punk just because I think entertainment-wise, I'd rather watch, you know, Drew McIntyre or Seth Rollins. All right, the second one is Randy Orton. Gunther, Jay Uso. Now, y'all know what time it is. Starting Gunther. That's just easy. I'm going to bench Randy Orton. Ugh, that's tough. I'm going to bench Randy and I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to bench Jay Uso and I'm going to cut Randy just because I think Randy has a lot going for him. And, but I do think there's others who are better right now. 
and not based on just full nostalgia and history. Um, number three, we have Finn Balor versus AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn. I'm going to go with Finn Balor start, bench AJ, and I'm going to cut Sami Zayn because ain't, he ain't no way he should be the intercontinental champion. Um, but that's the way the world works sometimes. And then we have the we have a factions question. So undisputed era, the hurt business, or the new day. Like which one? So again, hurt business, uh, undisputed era, new day. Uh, I'm gonna start undisputed era just because I think they're one of the greatest of all time. And I'm going to bench. Um, I'm going to bench the new day, and I'm going to cut her business only because her business I thought only had a, had a short run. Unfortunately, even though they had a great run uh, during the pandemic at times, but I thought her business was amazing. Um, they did a great, great job. Shout out to them. Um, and okay, now we have. Let's see here. Get my notes right. Okay. Then we have. Uh, yeah, again, um, undisputed. Yeah. Then we have Ilya Dragunov, Ron Breaker, and Bobby Lashley. It's tough because I'm a huge Bobby Lashley fan. However, I'm a huge fan of the other two as well. I'm going to go with... Mm, I'm going to go with starting Ilya. I got to bench Steiner. You know, I got to bench Braun Breaker. And then I got to cut... Man, that hurts. Got to cut Bobby Lashley. Just because Bobby hasn't done anything in a minute. You know what I mean? Not his fault, but he hasn't done anything in a minute. <clears throat> And then L.A. Knight or Logan Paul, I'm going to pick L.A. Knight. I'm gonna, if we've got to do start once, bench, cut, I'm going to do L.A. Knight just because I think L.A. is better overall. I think, you know, Logan has some amazing skills, but I think overall L.A. Knight is better in, in most areas, promo, in the ring, uh, the look, the crowd engagement, the music. I'm going to go L.A. Knight. Um, probably need to throw a third person on there. So I will throw on, hmm, I'm going to throw on Carmelo Hayes. So L.A. Knight, Logan Paul, Carmelo. I'm going to start L.A. Knight. I'm going to bench Carmelo, and I'm going to cut Logan Paul just because experience and I just think star power, which I think uh, Paul has, Logan Paul has, but just sometimes it, like his music, his intros aren't the greatest. And he feels like a made-up character sometimes in his wrestling style. Um, but yeah, I I do think I am interested in SummerSlam. I'm interested in how they're going to make this work, how they're going to pull off the main event as far as Bloodline versus Cody and RKO. And... I'm interested how Bianca is going to somehow get involved in SummerSlam, you know, some of the women's division stuff. I'm interested in how that's going to work. I think I am also interested in if Rhea is going to get her title back um, because Liv stands no chance keeping that belt outside of something happening, you know. And so, yeah, I, I just think Rhea gets her belt. I think Gunther gets his belt. I think there's a lot of like a lot of title changes in SummerSlam just due to the magnitude magnitude of the show. And also just I think it's time for a few of these Sammy, Liv, you know, uh Damien. It's, it's, I think it's time for that. Right. So I do think overall, right now, I'm really excited about watching the bloodline, Jacob Fatu develop. Really excited about Rhea and Dom's relationship and kind of how that progresses and the funny parts of it. Uh, that's been great. Um, I'm also looking forward to that Braun Breaker Sammy match just because, like I mentioned, they're going to be, it's going to be very heavy hitting. And I think Braun is going to be ready this time where he wasn't 
necessarily the most ready in the last match. Um, I think he'll be ready this time, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if they pulled the trigger on it, right? He he looks like a champ. He looks like a grade-A guy, so why not give him a belt, you know? Um, but I'm excited to see SummerSlam. I'm excited to see these next couple shows. Uh, one thing I am not excited to see is the Wyatt Six, but I digress. You know, I'm not into that stuff, but some people are. So I, I got to let them, let them cook. I get the homage they're paying to Bray Wyatt, but it's a little excessive right now, you know, and it's, I don't know. It's just a lot of, a lot going on. I'm not the most mystical when it comes to pro wrestling. I don't love that type of stuff. However, what they do is kind of cool. So I'll give them that. Uh, I just won't be watching as closely when they come on the screen, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, we are again, rolling through it man it feel like we just started the year now we're at SummerSlam you know what I mean next thing you know we'll be looking up and we're at Wrestlemania you know the year's flying by got a lot of action going on um and yeah please check us out um we're, we're looking forward to Friday I think they're going to confirm some matches as far as Cody and RKO versus uh the Bloodline I think they're going to confirm some stuff for maybe Jey Uso for Bianca Belair. Um, they're going to confirm a few matches that we were like, okay, the card is very kind of little. I think they're going to confirm about two more matches probably. Um, but yeah, man, I, and it may even be the, actually now I think about it, it may be the Saturday, the Friday after, but I do think it's coming up. Um, they're building towards it. And yeah, I just, want to thank everybody for tapping in with us, you know what I mean? Keeping up with things, keeping up with what's going on and the latest going on in each show. Uh, it's been fun to follow, especially these last couple of weeks. Uh, the the Monday Night Raw and SmackDown have been pretty good. Um, and NXT is killing it as well. Um, I, I got the uh, Joe Hendry song stuck in my head, as many do. Um, so, looking forward to to seeing how they're going to pull off these pay-per-views even with, and I, I see that they're going to Tokyo. Like, it's a lot going on right now. And uh, I'm excited to see how they pull all this stuff off. So, again, tap in with me. Uh, tell me your top five, um, your start bench cut, you know, results. Let me know what would you do for, again, I'll run through them again. Drew McIntyre, CM Punk, Seth Rollins. I'm going to start Drew. I'm going to bench Seth Rollins. I'm going to cut CM Punk. As far as Randy, Gunther, and Jay Uso, we're going to start Gunther. We're going to bench um, Rand- or we're going to bench Jay Uso. Got to cut Randy. Uh, I mean, no offense to the guy, but got to cut him. Then we got Finn, AJ, and Sami Zayn. I got to start Finn, bench AJ, and I got to cut good old Sami, the IC champ. And then Undisputed Era, Hurt Business, New Day. Got to start Undisputed Era. Amazing. One of the greatest factions of my lifetime. And I got to bench New Day just because they've done so much uh, and had damn near three Hall of, individual Hall of Famers outside of just the New Day. And then the Hurt Business, which unfortunately gets punished because it was not around as long, but it was oh so good. Oh, so good. Um, then, finally, we have Ilya Dragunov, Braun Breaker, and Bobby Lashley. And I'm going to start Ilya, bench Braun, and I'm going to cut Bobby Lashley. It's unfortunate, but Bobby Lashley had to go. So, until next time, folks, we out. Yeah.